Hey, this is Mr. Perez. Welcome to Solving Equations Part 3. But before we get started, let's get out Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, what are you doing over there? What? Today we're doing Solving Equations Part 3. So here we go, right there. Solving Equations Part 3. Now, in this particular lecture, we're going to do three problems. The first problem is an equation that needs to be solved, and it's a little bit challenging for this beginning algebra level, but we can do it. The second equation will be an equation that has no solution to it, which means the set of solutions is the empty set, which means there are no solutions. And the third and final equation will be an equation where the solution set is all real numbers, which basically means any real number will solve the equation. Now, yes, Charlie, is this going to be on the test? Of course it's going to be on the test. What do you think we're doing this for? Oh, and remember, by the way, you don't have to learn this stuff now. You can always come back and do it. Here it comes next semester. Uh-huh. Quit fooling around, Charlie. Here we go. Right there, okay? Solve the equation. Now, here's our equation. Don't get scared. Now, remember, we have fractions, but we can clear those fractions out. We can kung fu them by using the lowest common denominator for all of our fractions. So, Charlie, look at all your fractions. What is the lowest common denominator? Twelve. Very nice there, Charlie, it is 12. Now remember, we're going to multiply both sides of our equation by 12 and distribute. So be careful here. Watch, Charlie. Here we have 12 times 3 halves times t. Subtract 12 times the 1 fourth times the quantity t subtract 1. And that's equal to 12 times a negative 1 6 times the quantity t plus 2. Okay, Charlie, now here we go. Here's our clearing fractions technique. 12 divided by 2 is what? 6. And 6 times 3? 18 is 18, but don't forget it's 18t. Now bring down your subtraction. Next one. 12 divided by 4 is what, Charlie? 3. 3 times 1 is? 3. 3, but that has to be multiplied to the quantity t subtract 1. We'll distribute in the next step. Now on the right hand side, 12 divided by 6 is what? 2. And 2 times a negative 1 is what, Charlie? Negative 2. Negative 2, but that has to be distributed to the quantity t plus 2 in the next step. So here we go, Charlie. We have 18t. Now, negative 3 times t is what, Charlie? Negative 3t. That's right. Negative 3 times a negative 1, positive 3. Very nice there. Now, negative 2 times t, negative 2t. And bring it home, Charlie. Negative 2 times a positive 2 is what? Negative 4. Negative 4. Okay, now, let's move on to our next page here. We'll put our work up there. Now, Charlie, what comes next? Combine like terms. That's right. So, 18 t plus a negative 3t is what? 15t. That's right. Bring down your 3. The right hand side, those are not like terms, so you can't combine, right? You can combine those terms on the right hand side if you want to repeat the class. <laughs> right? They're not like terms, so you can't combine them, right? Okay. Now, let's put our variables on the left by doing what to both sides, Charlie? Add 2t. That's right. So those cancel. 15t plus 2t is 17t. And bring down your 3. And well, don't forget you have a negative 4. What comes next, Charlie? Subtract 3. That's right. So those cancel. We're left with 17t on the left. Negative 4 plus a negative 3 is what, Charlie? Negative 7. That's right. Okay, now let's go up there. 17t is equal to negative 7. Now, Charlie, what do we do to get the 1t? Divide both sides by 17. Divide both sides by 17, and we get the 1t is equal to a negative because a negative divided by positive is negative negative 7 over 17. Now, if you wanted to make sure your solution is correct, you'd have to go back and substitute that result into the original equation and see if your statement is true. It will be true. And what does that mean, though? It means since we end up with a final statement that's true when you check your solution, the solution set is the set of numbers, which includes only one, negative 7 over 17, right? There's only one solution in the solution set for this equation. Okay, let's move on to our next equation now. Solve the equation. Now, this equation will have no solution. So let's look at what happens. Okay, no fractions here. Let's get rid of the parentheses by applying the distributive property. So we have 6t subtract 3t plus 3 equals 5t subtract 2t subtract 4, right? Okay, now, combine like terms. Left-hand side, Charlie, pay attention. 6t plus a negative 3t is 3t, bring down your 3. Right hand side, we're going to combine the 5t plus the negative 2t, which is 3t, and we're left with a negative 4. Now, Charlie, to get rid of the variables on the right hand side, we do what? 
Subtract 3t. That's right. Now notice they cancel there, but notice over here, they also cancel. So what happens is we end up with a 3 equal to negative 4. So we end up with a contradiction here. Therefore, we look at our statement, it's false, right? So since we have this contradiction, this equation has no solution to it. Okay. Therefore, the solution set is empty. And we have a symbol that represents a solution set that is empty. It's that symbol right there, the null set or the empty set, right? It's just that symbol. There's no brackets around it. It's just that symbol. And that means the solution set is empty and therefore there is no solution. And that occurs when you end up with a final statement that is a contradiction or is false, okay? Now, let's go to this next equation. This is an equation that has all real numbers as the solution. That's the set of all real numbers in the solution set. So here we go, Charlie. We first bring down our work. Let's apply the distributive property here. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 3 times a negative 2q is a plus 6q. Right-hand side is 5q plus 2q. Subtract 12. Combine like terms, Charlie. 1q plus 6q's is how many q's, Charlie? 7q's. 7q. Okay, subtract 12. Right-hand side, what's 5q's plus 2 more q's? 7q. Very nice there, Charlie. Bring down your work. And notice, to isolate the variable on the right-hand side, you subtract 7q, right? And so, notice they cancel there, but they also cancel over here. And therefore, you end up with negative 12 equals negative 12. We do not have a contradiction. Our statement is true. What does this mean? Notice the variables are gone, but we end up with a true statement. What it means is that this equation has infinite solutions. What does that mean? It means the solution set is a set of all real numbers. It means any real number will solve the equation. And therefore, our solution set is the set of all real numbers. And that is your answer there. So that was a tough one. That's enough for equations at this point. Let's move on in the course. We'll see you all again soon.